Hello there. Let me just start off by saying that today and every day until some random day in January, it is Christmas up in the library. Too early for Christmas, you say? Oh, pshaw. We don't wait for Christmas to come. We bring Christmas to the library. I hope you enjoy what you see. made it. Hi, my name is Floss. This is the Grape Jelly Library where we love to talk about books. Yes, we do. And today we are talking Christmas books. But first, I forgot to say oops. I'm so glad you could join me. I always look forward to your visit. All right, so let me just bring to your table the first non-Christmas and the only non-Christmas book of this video. And that would be North Woods by Daniel Mason. I am doing a buddy read with Alan from Big Hard Books and Classics. And we are doing a buddy read of this book right here. And I would say I'm 50% through it. Um, I'm hoping to get it done on Tuesday, my day off. But so far, so far, I am really enjoying it. I hope Alan is too. I didn't get a chance to get back over onto that Voxer today. But um, yeah, I hope that he is enjoying it as well. But stay tuned for both of our book reviews. By the way, if you are unfamiliar with Alan's channel, I will put his link in my description. You can go over, check him out. He's a cool guy. Um, cool guy cool channel i really enjoy watching him so we are doing this buddy read and then i will do a book review and he will do a book review and um anybody out there wondering if you want should read this book if you have your reservations about this book maybe either one of our book reviews will you know solve whatever questions or answer whatever questions you have about this book but so far, so good. I'm really enjoying it. And you know what? I have to say, I'm really vibing on the cover of this. Isn't this just a beautiful cover? Those of us who appreciate books, we fall in love with more than just the story. We fall in love with the aesthetic of the book as well. Okay, so now, let the fun begin. <laughs> I'm so excited. All of these books are... Christmas related, Christmas themed for sure. And some of them were chosen because of their silly titles. You know, I like to have a good time. And if you can, if you can give me a good time just with the title alone, I am here for that book. I have a stack. Let me get it. By the way, how do you like the library? How do you like what I did with it? I did this for you so that you would have pretty things to look at when you come over and visit me. Okay, so how do you like this glass, too? I bought it at an antique place for $5. I, there was two of them, so I bought two of them, and I remember these glasses in the 70s. We didn't own any, but, boy, I remember seeing them, and, you know, I like a little nostalgia. I really do. I appreciate it. Okay, so... Let's get to these books, like I said. Okay. I have a stack. A stack to go through. I don't really know much about anything. I do get a vibe. Um, I know a smidge about maybe one or two of these books. So, let's see what we have. Okay, this one was a Walmart exclusive sold only at Walmart. All right. I'll just leave it on there. I don't really give a, I don't give a poop about stickers. All right. How my neighbor stole Christmas. USA Today bestselling author Megan Quinn. All right. That's the first book. I don't know that I'm going to read all of these books, but I am going to tell you that after I finish Northwood's then I am reading exclusively Christmas-themed books only. I'm, I'm going to go there. 
Okay, as his fellow citizens decorate their quaint town brimming with carols and glad tidings, Cole wants nothing more than to hibernate the winter away. But his dreary plans are thwarted when his Christmas nemesis, Story Taylor, moves in next door to care for her Aunt Cindy. Immediately, the new neighbor turns his life into a real nightmare before Christmas, especially when she decides to enter the town Christmas Kringle contest in honor of Cindy, and better yet, Story is determined to win. So I have another book in this pile that is Christmas contest themed, and a little friendly competition. I did not get to read this last year. I had, and I didn't, I don't think I read any. Did I read any Christmas books last year? I don't know. A December to Remember. Wildly different half-sisters Maggie, Simone, and Star have hardly seen one another since their sprightly summers at Rowan Thorpe, their eccentric father Augustus's home. Known for his bustling approach to the knick-knack shop he ran, Augustus was loved by all and known by none, not even his daughters. Now years later, the three estranged women are called upon for the reading of Augustus's will and quickly realize he's orchestrated a series of hoops through which they must jump to unlock their inheritance. The last thing any of them want to do. But Maggie and Star desperately need the money, and who would Simone be to resist? Okay, yeah, so pretty much at Christmas time, a lot of us are busted. So I think that um, we can relate to Maggie and Star. I really, um, I feel that. So maybe this will be a good one to read. <sighs> you know, come that time of year. All right. Now this one, you know, I'm going to read this, but I'm going to read it closer to Christmas. Christmas wouldn't, any holiday as a matter of fact, for that matter, would not be a holiday in my household without good old Charlie Brown. The inspiring untold story of the making of a holiday classic, Charlie Brown's Christmas Miracle by Michael Keane. I bought this last year. I did not read it. Um, this year, I hope to do that. Professor and cultural historian Michael Keane re reveals much in his nostalgic-inducing book packed with original research and interviews. Keane compellingly shows that the ultimate broadcast of the Christmas special, given its incredibly tight five-month production schedule and the decidedly unfavorable reception it received by the skeptical network executives who first screened it, was nothing short of a miracle. Keene explains why the show, despite its technical shortcomings, has become an uplifting and enduring triumph embraced by millions of families every Christmas season, even more than 50 years after its premiere. All right. Ah, another book that I bought last year. Last year. And you know what? You know what I hate more than stickers on the front of a cover? is when the people opening these books from their boxes use their box cutters and then this happens and then I yeah I get stuck with it I I don't like that I don't want no I don't I don't I want a bougie book I don't want no junkers <laughs> Clumsy Ernest Baker Sylvie West has worked at the Christmas Cafe in Silver Bells, Wyoming, ever since her boozy eggnog fruitcake won the town's annual holiday bake-off. Her forever happy place, the cafe, complements her sweet, well-ordered life with her roommates, recently widowed Gramps, and her yappy chihuahua pug, Crumpet. That's a cute name. So when Sylvie learns the cafe might be sold, she's determined to save the only way she can by getting the Holiday Channel crew to set a scene at the cafe. Now, I remember I might have brought you this book last year and just never got around to reading it. Okay, so we're going to be saving the family cafe. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to read that one. I'm probably going to. Christmas at the Cupcake Cafe by Jenny Colgan. And by the way, that one was by Eliza Evans. Yes. So, Christmas at the Cupcake Cafe. I don't 
don't know if I'm going to read this one. I don't know. Maybe it'll convince me. Life is sweet for Izzy Randall, owner of the Cupcake Cafe, taught how to bake by her beloved late grandfather. She is proudly carrying on the family tradition at her London eatery. Not only is business thriving, the icing on the cupcake is that she also happens to be head over heels in love. Plus, she's surrounded and supported by close friends, even if her cupcake colleagues Pearl and Caroline don't seem quite as upbeat about the upcoming season of snow and merriment. Okay, I'm going to um, just cut it there. And just from that little little bit, I, I am going to. I think I am going to. I don't know. I like a little romance around the holidays. Just like Magic, another book I bought last year and did not get to. This is by Sarah Hochul. Betty Hughes once knew the comfort of luxury, flaunting a collection of designer purses. Woohoo! I love my designer purses. And an inviolable dream home in Hawaii. That was before she lost all her money. Long obsessed with her public image, Betty boasts an extravagant lifestyle on social media. But the reality is Betty is broke and squatting in Colorado and her family has no idea. I am reading this one for sure. I am reading this one. A, because I, I don't know why, but I am always gravitating towards any book that has ice skaters on it there's this thing about it i just i don't know and and these are another one of my favorites fyi um behind the scenes a little info on what flossy what floats flossy's boat and it would be lamp posts i love them love them i have one in front of my house because i love them okay ellie mcnichol some like a cold. All right. She came back to say goodbye, not to fall in love. After a long absence, Jasper Montgomery is finally visiting home for the holidays. Don't you love the names they give these characters? Lake Pristine, the picturesque, tight-knit town in which she's known as the Golden Girl, welcomes her back with open arms. While she secretly intends for this to be her final Lake Pristine holiday, everyone hopes she'll eventually move home again, especially Arthur Lancaster. Arthur, a budding filmmaker, is turning Lake Pristine into a small town story worthy of the big screen. But when Jasper returns, Arthur's angel is compromised by the antagonist from his high school days, a girl he never quite forgot. When it comes out that Jasper is only back to say goodbye, the temperature starts to rise between the girl who can't seem to stay away and the brooding film buff who never wanted her to leave in the first place. Okay, throughout the book, McNichol delivers a breathtaking story of love, joy, that will keep the reader hooked until the very last page. Okay, we'll see, because I am going to read this book, because I did buy it this year, specifically because I adore this cover. I adore it. I'm going to save the best for last. I have no idea what this is about, but it's a beautiful, beautiful cover. My two, another FYI, my two favorite colors together are red and white. Love it. This is by Stephanie Garber, and it's called Spectacular. Um, is anybody familiar with this book? Even the back of it is stunning. Even the back. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Yes, for sure. Oh, for sure. This is a beaut. It's a beaut. We're reading this one for sure. The pages, look at this. This is stunning. I hope, I hope this turns out to be my favorite book of the year. I have high hopes for this one. It's great holiday Eve Eve. Scarlet Dragna is planning a spectacular holiday celebration for the city. Donatella is searching for the perfect gift. Julian is looking ridiculously handsome in green and legend. Well, sadly, legend is not fond of the great holiday. Tella is hoping her perfect gift will change his mind. Unfortunately, she hasn't found this perfect gift just yet. But it is great holiday Eve Eve. Surely there's some holiday magic swirling around. 
set after Stephanie Garber's number one New York Times best-selling Caravelle series. This delightful novella will take readers on the ultimate holiday adventure full of clockwork boys, poisoned candy, impish snow globes, merriment, and, if Tella gets her way, love. So, you know what? I have never, ever, ever fallen in love with a Christmas themed book ever except for a Christmas story. My friend Amy uh, via the previous video that we did together she said she thinks she wants to read that book and I was like hands up I will read it with you. Me and Amy have a book club together. Just me and her. We're the only two members and it is called Read Whatever the Hell You Want book club and she reads what she wants and she comes and tells me and I choose the books that I want to read and then I tell her all about it and then sometimes we meet in the middle and we read books together and that's how that works and you know I'm digging it okay so now the next to the last book I chose because of the name I chose it because of the name is a darling name it's by Beth Garrett and it's called All the Jingle Ladies. Now tell me you do not think that is funny. I think that is hilarious so I think it's worth my time reading. This holiday season learn to love your elf. My goodness look it. You know whoever comes up with this stuff I say kudos to because you put a smile on my face. Molly hates Christmas ever since her parents released a cheesy Christmas song 10 years ago. Complete with a video of Molly dressed as the cutest little elf. December has gone from ho 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 to ha ha humiliating. This year takes a turn for the worse when the song of Molly's Nightmares is included on the soundtrack for the hottest new holiday film. This mortifying tune is everywhere again as Molly tries to hide her true elf, a Christmas connection with a cute guy at the movie's premiere, may make this holiday season one to remember. All she has to do is keep him from finding out the truth about the ghost of elf mist past. But Molly isn't the only one hiding her real identity. Will her Christmas romance have a Hollywood ending or will it be one big mistletoe mess? Will it? I'm going to read it and I am going to find out and then I'll tell you all about it. Okay, I've saved the best for last. So if you watched The Grinch, there was that neighbor next door and um, The Grinch who stole Christmas. Okay, there was that neighbor next door, that sexy neighbor in the Santa suit who just did everything bigger and better than than the who neighbor. I do not know their names because I do not watch a lot of movies. But I am sure that many of you know what I am referring to. But anyways, this book is a lot like that. Bones of Holly, a Sarah Booth Delaney mystery by Carolyn Haynes, USA Today bestselling author. Okay, so now this is, I saw this book and I wanted to buy it, but I didn't. And then I went back and I wanted to buy it and I did it and then and there was only one in the Barnes and Nobles and then another time this is when I was bookshop and I would go up there at least weekly but um I don't go up at all now because I'm on a book buying ban but anyways I'm grateful that I bought this book before that ban happened in my world let me tell you, let me tell you why I wanted this book so badly and why I'm so grateful that I have it. Private investigator Sarah Booth Delaney and her partner Tinky are in base St. Louis, Mississippi for Christmas this year as guest judges for an annual tree decorating contest. Okay, right off the bat, we're dealing with Southerners and I love a Southerner. Did you know that I am not from the South, but I am Southern? In my heart, sure I am. The other two judges are writers, Sandra O'Day and Janet Malone. They are best-selling Mississippi authors and bitter competitors. In fact, the feud between them is the stuff of legends. For years, they brawled, their sales skyrocketing with each catfight. Sandra's most recent true crime book documents the 1920s rum-running era of Al Capone, who built a mansion in base. 
St. Louis and a distribution network for his liquor. Janet's book, scheduled to be published in January, is a fictional account of the same material which only heightens their rivalry. Sarah Booth and Tinky are shopping with Tinky's baby, Malin, when they see Sandra and Janet outside a bookstore, fur flying. When Sandra vanishes from her own gala later that night, Suspicion turns to Janet, who accuses Sandra of attempting to manipulate the media by a fake disappearance. But it is a stunt, or is it something more sinister at play? Sarah Booth and Tinky will have to dive deep into the history of Bay St. Louis and even Al Capone himself to get to the bottom of this case, but the trail, in fact, leads them back to several prominent families still residing in the area, families who may not want their secrets known. All right, so this book I know is going to make me laugh. I know it. I don't know what my favorite Christmas book of the year will be, but I'm not going to put the horse before the cart before the horse. Did I say that right? But anyways, um, they are my holiday picks. I hope to get to all of them this season as I am going to start ASAP. Whatever you are reading, I hope you are having a ball Know that I love you. Don't let those bad days win. And when you dream, make sure you're dreaming big.